is just fantastic. Captain's Log, Subdate 220509.8 We begin the week with a mandatory search of crew quarters, mostly for drugs like Haribo. Last time we conducted these searches we found over 200 kilos of sherbet in Bork's room, and I doubt it was a stitcher. I also reckon he'll have more in his quarters now. His nose is looking a bit hollow these days. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing week 2 of the Amber Heard vs Johnny Depp defamation trial. We have done 3 videos so far, this is the 4th, and this will serve as a timeline for the 2nd week, we're now into week 4 or 5 now. And this is where things start to really get interesting, because I believe Johnny Depp takes the stand. And boy oh boy, does he have a lot to say. If many of you remember, Amber Heard had called the change.org petition that at the time had just over a million signatures, nothing more than a paid for PR stunt. Well, it has since reached over 3 million signatures. No doubt she would attribute this to soccer counts and more paid stands for Johnny Depp, all 3 million of them, or one with a dedicated server for generating so many fake accounts, am I right? During the second week of the trial, Johnny Depp denied ever striking Amber Heard and insisted that he wants both his children and movie fans to know the truth regarding his character and his relationship with his former wife, telling the court, Never did I myself reach the point of striking Miss Heard in any way. It's very strange when one day you're Cinderella, so to speak, then 0.6 seconds later, you're Quasimodo. I didn't deserve that, nor did my children, nor did the people who believed in me all these years. I didn't want any of those people to believe I had done them wrong, or that I was a fraud. I pride myself on honesty. I pride myself on truth. Truth is the only thing I am interested in. Lies will get you nowhere but build lies upon lies that build upon lies. I am obsessed with the truth. Johnny Depp also described that in 2014, under doctor's instruction, he had gone to the Bahamas on a detox trip. At that time, Amber Heard had taken charge of his medication because he was at the lowest point in his life, but Amber Heard had refused to give him his meds when he was in a desperate need for them, with Amber Heard saying it was not the right time. When recalling the incident, Johnny Depp said, I hate to have to admit this, but that was about the lowest point in my life because I had to say please. Please may I have the meds because it was really kicking in. She was adamant it was not time. And as a coping mechanism because of that issue, he had rolled off the sofa, sitting on the floor crying, to then go to a shower to have a scalding hot shower as a way of tricking his body into dealing with the pain of that rather than the withdrawal symptoms he was going through. It's nice to see that when someone is put in a position of trust, they respond to it by making sure the person who is going through the withdrawal suffers as much as possible. I assume she believed she was helping him by driving him on and not at all being a massive sadist. Later on, a photo of Johnny Depp's severed finger was shown in court, which had come about during an argument with Amber Heard while he was in Australia filming the fifth Pirates of the Caribbean film in 2015. Amber had previously claimed that the trip down under was a three-day hostage situation due to Johnny Depp's abusive behavior. At that time, the pair had only recently been married, with Johnny saying that Amber Heard was upset by talks they had had about prenuptial and postnuptial agreements. Johnny told the court that he had locked himself in at least nine bedrooms and bathrooms in the rented house, and said that Amber was banging on the doors, screaming obscenities. Then he went downstairs to pour two or three stiff shots of vodka, informing the court that Amber Heard had hurled the bottle at him and it smashed behind his head. After he poured another shot from a bigger bottle, Johnny said that she also threw that one at him, and after it shattered, some of the glass hit his finger. Quote this saying, I was looking directly at my bone, sticking out, blood was pouring out, adding it was the closest he's ever been to having a nervous breakdown. He then showed the court his finger, the funny looking one of course, before adding that it looked like Vesuvius at the time. If you're seeing an article on the screen, I'm having to, let's say, remove allegedly and claimed as much as possible, because this has already been proven. She did, in fact, do all of this. And if anyone watched her reactions in court during this time, I've never seen someone look so defeated when they themselves had no idea what to do. Johnny was giving all the receipts, and in doing so, Amber could not, because it's a court of law now, clap back. All she could do is sit in silence 
looking incredibly broken, dejected, and, well, earlier aforementioned, defeated. But don't worry, folks. There's more to add. More stupid shit, pun intended, that Amber Heard has done. So let's now talk about that. I'm sure many of you have seen the pictures that did their rounds, and you could certainly Google image search this anyway, of a poop on a bed. Poop gate, I guess we can call it if you like. No lie, Amber Heard took a dump on a bed. Now there's a little more context to that. I'm sure there's a valid reason for it, but we're not going to get it from her because she says that it came from a Yorkshire Terrier. As someone that has relatives that have had Yorkshire Terriers their entire lives and therefore been in my life for most of my life, allow me to tell you if you see the image of the poop on the bed that is not Yorkshire Terrier sized. That is human sized, which is about the same size as a Yorkshire Terrier. Now I know Yorkshire Terriers are little shits, but they are not a literal shit. Please, Amber, that is crap. I think I've come up with all the jokes I can think of. If you guys can think of better turd-related jokes, and of course, insert here, Amber Turd is a psychopath! By all means do so, funniest gets pinned. So how in court does Johnny Depp address this? Well, the entire reason this had happened was because Johnny Depp had arrived late to her 30th birthday, with Johnny Depp saying that she had gone to the Coachella Arts and Music Festival in 2016, and following an argument, he had gone back to their LA home to pick up a few items, only for his security guard, Sean Bett, to warn him against going into the bedroom after showing him a photograph of their marital bed. Johnny then told the court, on my side of the bed was human fecal matter. I laughed. It was so outside, it was so bizarre and so grotesque that I could only laugh. Amber then went on to, as you all know, blame this on the Yorkshire Terriers. Johnny, though, believed the actress or one of her friends was responsible for it by saying, I lived with those dogs for many years. That did not come from a dog. It just didn't. The dogs are teacup Yorkies, they weigh about four pounds each which is about three pounds under what those turds weigh. The photograph I saw, that did not come from a dog, it just didn't. Next on the agenda were messages that Johnny Depp had sent to his friends, more notably Paul Bettany, aka Vision. Amber Heard's lawyer, Benjamin Rottenborn, interesting name, read out the messages in the court, which included, let's burn Amber, let's drown her before we burn her, and I will do her burnt corpse afterward to make sure she is dead. These messages were sent before the couple got married, and Johnny admitted that the lawyer had read them out correctly. In a later conversation with Paul Bettany, the actor said he had drunk all night before picking up Amber to fly to LA, with the message reading, ugly, mate, no food for days, powders, half a bottle of whiskey, a thousand Red Bull and vodkas, pills, two bottles of shampoos on plane. In another series of messages delivered to his manager, Johnny wrote, I got drunk and destroyed my room. There are hookers and animals in here. It's then moved on from that to discussing the kitchen cabinets that all deserve an F in the comments. Amber Heard had secretly filmed Johnny Depp slamming kitchen cabinets repeatedly during a sweary tirade, which led him to confess in court that he assaulted a couple of cabinets. Clearly, I was having a bad time. I don't know what with regard to, but being illegally recorded by your chosen other is quite fitting with the rest of the photographs and tape recordings. She tried to hide it from me and laughed and smiled at the end. That was the most interesting part. In another picture, you saw Johnny Depp passed out with a substantial amount of ice cream dribbling down his lap. Johnny had accused Amber of staging the humiliating photo after he had finished a long day of filming on the set of Black Mass in Boston during 2014. The court were also shown a second snap of what appears to be sherbet, alcohol and tobacco on a table, taken at a time that Johnny had fallen off the wagon. Amber's lawyer said to Johnny, this is a picture of you on a black leather couch passed out, correct? With Johnny replying, passed out is an interesting way of putting it, maybe asleep. Miss Heard asked me to hold the ice cream when she noticed I was on the nod. That means falling asleep from the 17 hour day I worked and also the opioids I had ingested. You will notice my right hand is in my pocket, so I wasn't participating in the festival of ice cream. I was holding her ice cream and because she knew what would happen, I would fall asleep. This was a wonderful picture to take for her. I don't know why she took it. The court were also shown a second image, of what appears to be sherbet, alcohol, tobacco on a table. Asked if he would drink whiskey in the morning, Johnny replied, isn't happy hour any time. This concludes week two of the trial so far. I will be covering week three on Wednesday. 
do let me know what you think about what we know so far. I should now insert, Johnny had a very interesting way of handling in court what he went through. People have mocked the drawing, the coping mechanisms. Victims of DV are going to manifest coping mechanisms in any way they can as a means of making things easier for them to then do what is right. And the way he handled the defense was almost admirable. But do let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you.